The molecular orbitals of delocalized pi systems tend to be more complicated than the natural bond orbitals we've looked at previously. This is because the molecular orbitals of delocalized pi systems are, well, delocalized. And this means that the orbitals have lobes on most, if not all, of the atoms involved in the conjugated pi system. For example, in a molecule like butadiene, we would expect the lowest energy pi molecular orbital of this molecule to consist of four p orbitals all overlapping in a constructive manner on all four atoms of the conjugated pi system. On some level, this is the norm for molecular orbital theory in that it shows that the electrons are spread out over the entire molecule, an important tenet of molecular orbital theory that's missing from more localized bonding theories. But this is relatively unique given what we've talked about in the past with natural bond orbitals. In an orbital like this, the electrons occupying this orbital are spread out over all four atoms. They're not localized in one or the other of the pi bonds. Despite their visual complexity, we're going to study the molecular orbitals of delocalized pi systems because their shapes and energies tell us a lot about how these systems behave and some of their unique characteristics. For example, it's going to become very clear why long conjugated systems can conduct electricity and why they're often colored. We'll also be able to use insights from molecular orbital theory to understand substituted aromatic compounds in a later lesson. All that said, you won't be expected to construct pi molecular orbitals from nothing. This gets complicated just because of the sheer number of orbitals involved. We're going to have as many pi orbitals as we have atoms in the pi system. Instead, we're going to use computer software to do this for us. These are basically miniature WebMO type programs that use this relatively simple method called the Huckel method to construct pi molecular orbitals. The one we're going to look at is called HULIS, H-U-L-I-S. It's called HULIS because it combines the Huckel method to generate pi molecular orbitals with Lewis mesomery, which basically means different resonance structures. So this program can both generate important resonance structures of a delocalized pi system and display its molecular orbitals. Let's begin with ethylene, C2H4. A molecular structure of ethylene is shown here, and on the right we see the pi molecular orbitals of ethylene. Unsurprisingly, we have one filled pi molecular orbital, that is pi bonding molecular orbital, and we have one empty pi star molecular orbital. And clicking on these, will show us the shape of each orbital on top of the molecular structure. So the pi bonding orbital has what should by now be to us a familiar shape. Two p orbitals overlapping in a side-on fashion to form a bonding orbital. Just a quick note on this, we're looking down from above on the pi orbital here. The top and bottom lobes have opposite shading just like any regular p orbital. And we can tell that the overlap here is constructive since the shaded lobes are both on top and the unshaded lobes are both below the molecule. In the pi star antibonding orbital, we have a destructive interaction between the two lobes, as evidenced by the opposite shading on either side of the molecule. One last thing I want to draw your attention to here is the gap in energy between the pi and pi star orbitals. The zero line on this energy diagram is essentially the non-bonding level. This is the energy of an isolated 2p orbital, and it's given the name alpha within this software and within the Huckel method. Orbitals with energies higher than the zero line are anti-bonding, while orbitals with energies below the zero line are bonding. And notice here that the gap in energy between the pi and pi star orbitals for ethylene is about two units based on the energy units used here, which rely on a quantity called beta, which we can actually see is the stabilization due to overlap of the p orbitals in ethylene. Keep that two unit difference in mind and watch what happens as we add more atoms to the conjugated pi system. Let's do that now. What happens when I add two more atoms to this conjugated pi system to generate butadiene? Let's optimize the structure and center it and observe what's happened on the orbital energy diagram. We've gone from two pi molecular orbitals to four. And now, rather than using the pi and pi star labels, it's a little bit more appropriate to start indexing the pi orbitals since we have more than two. Pi one and pi two are both bonding, while pi three and pi four are both anti-bonding. Notice what's happened to the gap between the highest occupied molecular orbital, here pi two, and the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, here pi three. The gap has shrunk from about 2 units down to about 1.2 units. That's a considerable contraction in the HOMO-LUMO energy gap. Let's take a look at the shapes now. Pi 1 involves constructive interference between all atoms in the molecule. The shading or phasing is the same on all four atoms. In Pi 2, 
we find one node near the center of the molecule right here. One thing to note about this is that if we think about a typical Lewis structure for butadiene that places double bonds between the two outer carbons, what we find here is that there's constructive overlap between the carbons that would be doubly bound in this Lewis structure. That's actually typical for the HOMOs, the highest occupied molecular orbital of polyenes like this, molecules containing many double bonds linked so that they participate in conjugation. If we look now at the LUMO of this molecule, we see that there are now two nodes, and the nodes actually exist where we see double bonds in the Lewis structure. And this is again typical of LUMOs of polyenes. And finally, the highest energy pi molecular orbital has the most nodes. We see an alternating phasing pattern so that there's a node between every adjacent pair of atoms. What happens when we add yet another double bond to this conjugated system? Let's move now to hexatriene, a pi system with six atoms total. Now we have six total pi molecular orbitals, and I'm just going to focus in now on the HOMO and LUMO. Briefly, if we look at the shapes of the lower energy filled pi molecular orbitals, we see that this one lacks nodes. This one has one node in the center. The HOMO has two nodes, where we would expect single bonds in the Lewis structure of this molecule. The LUMO has three nodes at locations where we would expect the double bonds to be in the Lewis structure. The next orbital up has four nodes here, 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 and here. And the highest energy orbital has the most nodes between every adjacent pair of nuclei. If we look at the HOMO-LUMO gap here, we find that it's gone from about 1.2 in the butadiene case to only about 0.9 in the hexatriene case. That homo-lumo gap is getting smaller and smaller as we add more carbons to the polyene. One other thing to mention that I haven't paid too much attention to so far is the number of electrons within these pi molecular orbitals. That number of electrons corresponds to the number of pi electrons that participate in resonance within the conjugated system. In this case, the pi electrons are associated with the six pi bonding electrons within this hexatriene molecule. Butadiene has four, and of course ethylene only has two. So we can notice a few patterns as we go to higher and higher polyenes in the nature of pi molecular orbitals. One is that for a particular polyene, as we move from lower energy to higher energy orbitals, we find an increasing number of nodes in the molecular orbital shape. This is actually a very common pattern that we see in molecular orbital theory. It applies to atomic as well as molecular orbitals. Higher energy orbitals have a larger number of nodes. The other thing we notice as we move from two to four to six atom pi systems and beyond is that this homo-lumo energy gap, the gap between the highest filled orbital and the lowest empty orbital is shrinking. This means it takes less energy to promote an electron from the homo to the lumo. And ultimately, this is the origin of the colors and electrical conductivity of long conjugated systems.